Hello, welcome back to Oracle DBA tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about shared pool. So, this is a big picture in the abstract uh, picture of Oracle server. We are discussing about this part of the memory structure. Okay. So, in this video, we are going to discuss what are the shared pool and what kind of information the shared pool contain and how to manage shared pool. Alright. So let's uh, take an example. If I, if a, like you know, say a client uh, is going to give this SQL statement, select star from EMP. So if you go by in the thing that is going to come, you know, first thing you're going to connect, and when connect, we're going to create a dedicated server process. So dedicated server process. Uh, for this client assuming that this is running the oracle server is running in the dedicated server mode and then is, this is a memory structure and then this is where your data, data files are there so in data file where I have my information about uh, you know the employee record is available here so what is going to happen is that the dedicated server is going to check if this thing is in the, if the syntax is correct or not the syntax is correct then number two like if the syntax is correct it will check if there is an employee table there in the database or not because we are querying from the EMP table right so if EMP table is available so once the dedicated server is going to get all this kind of metadata information then what he's going to do he is going to make a plan okay so make a let's put another color here so make a plan how to execute this query that that means how to get the data from the data file and put in the database buffer cache so that we learned in our previous tutorial so you know this block is going to come and then stay here and once it stays here and after that is going to you know dedicated server is going to give you the result of this query these three steps together is called parsing okay so this is a parsing of your SQL statement the parsing of SQL statement is saying that it is compiled and if you know the execution plan and all those things together called parsing let's say after some time, after we have done with select star from EMP, another user is coming and he is also giving select star from EMP. So if it does the select star from EMP, then what I'm going to do again, Oracle is you know the like you know, the user number two, he has his own dedicated server process, and then let's say this is dedicated server process two, then this is this dedicated server process two is going to do again the parsing that means all these three steps which are identical to the user number one is going to be redone by the dedicated server 2 for user number 2 because user number 2 is also giving the same query so this is bad right so basically you know why you want to reinvent the wheel if the wheel is there that means is it possible to reuse the past representation of this query like let's say ds1 you know got this uh, you know, select star from EMP then if ds1 is, is doing that then can we store like you know we have this memory structure where we are already storing the buffer database block buffer so is there any way we can store this past representation in the memory so that second time whenever this kind of query comes we will check first in the memory if we can get a parsed representation if we get a parsed representation then we just going to use that instead of reparsing you understand my point so that is what is the goal of shared pool shared pool is that area where we are going to store all this parsed structure of SQL and some PLSQL and then you know some other other things so essentially shared pool is the area where we store 
where we cache program bits. Okay, so DB block buffer uh, in, a, in the buffer cache, DB buffer cache, we are going to store the data. In the share pool, we store the program bits. So in that case, what is going to happen when we're going to since uh, you know so in, in the share pool, we are going to store the parsed value of the select star from EMP. In second time, whenever the sum query is going fast, we'll check that area and then see if there is a select star from EMP you know equivalent uh, there. Since in this case is there, so therefore we are not going to reparse, we are going to use that parse representation and get the data. And because and again that is going to be faster because I'm not I'm not going to do all these steps. And these steps are really very CPU intensive and we'll check like you know if the table is there and all this thing. And also to make it you know execution plan which optimizer is going to do that for you that also takes some time okay so all those things can be can be get out you know we don't need to do all those things if we use shared pool and if you keep this thing and shared among different sessions so that is the concept of shared pool and then shared pool is again divided into multiple things like multiple areas so as I, as, I, as we saw that if you go to this table v dollar sga start and if you query select name comma bytes from v dollar sga start where pool is equal to share pool so if you write this query then you are going to get maybe 200 rows that means those are the different areas inside the share pool but the most important areas of share pool we are going to discuss here so let's say this is the share pool share pool is divided into importantly into a part which is called library cache so this is called library cache so in library cache we are going to store the sql information like whenever you do that select star from emp the past representation of this query is going to be stored in this area called sql area which is the part of library cache okay the library cache is a part of share pool share pool is a part of your sga so that is how you can visualize then the remaining thing so in, in the SQL area what I'm going to uh, I'm going to have this is going to contain in the share pool a share SQL area contains the parse tree and execution plan of a SQL statement so this is going to contain parse tree and execution plan of SQL statement so whenever we're going to do select star from MP whatever the parse tree and execution session that is going to take some memory here okay and then let's say I do select star from DPT then it's going to take some some memory like this and so on eventually this area is going to filled if this area is going to filled then you are going to use LRU algorithm to remove to release whatever was old and whatever is new those things are going to be there inside the SQL area of your library cache. The remaining area is called PL SQL area. Okay, so the remaining area is called PL SQL area. So this is where whenever you are running a stored procedure or function, so that is this is the area to which the past you know value of that PL SQL procedure is going to be loaded. This is why whenever we discussed about why this PL SQL is faster because say for example user number one is going to execute a procedure called exec p1 so while he exec p1 this procedure p1 is compiled parsed and stored here in this PL SQL area next time user 2 is going to run exec p1 he is just going to run this one and that's going to be very you know much faster than anything else okay and then the next area is called okay so this area is is your dictionary cache so dictionary cache means as you, as you told you whenever we are going to do select star from EMP 
in the second step we are going to see that if employee table is there or not so that means it has to go to the database to see employee table is there or not in the for the first time if he knows that employee table is there then he is going to store that employee table is there that information in this cache called dictionary cache so dictionary cache is going to store whatever the data dictionary objects which is being used right now say so for example in if, if you if you when you you know write a query select star from department the department tables information like you know what kind of constraints are there what are the names of the columns what are the null value and all these things those things are going to come and then cast here in dictionary cache again this dictionary cache is a limited amount of area and this is managed by LRU algorithm then the next important structure is called control structure okay so this is called control structure so this control structure is going to keep the lock information let's say whenever you are updating something or if you want to do a SQL statement called lock table t so this control system control structure is going to store that this table is locked and what kind of lock is being you know acquired by that object and so on so so this is the major thing about SharePoint. But as I told you, if you query your V dollars SG start to find out what are the different components, you will find something else. So don't worry that because Oracle gives you all you know there are a lot of other things which I am not telling you here. Okay. And which sometimes you don't really need that. So if you know how to you know how much size all these things would be, then you can just basically you know you will you, be fine you don't need, need to know all of all other those small things but however sometimes for fine tuning and all those things you might need those things we want to uh, explain another important concept called bind variable so let's try to understand what is bind variable and then how people used to mess it up and then make the oracle database very low performing Let's say the query Q1 is somebody is going to give select star from EMP where employee number is equal to 1. So let's say this is the first time. So what's going to happen? That in my share pool, in my share pool, in my library cache, I have something called SQL area. So I'm going to, for first time since it's giving, I'm going to compile this thing and make sure that there's employee table there and there's employee number is a column and all this thing and I will make an execution plan and I'll store that execution plan and the parse structure inside the SQL area then let's say question number two somebody is going to give select star from EMP where employee number is equal to two so this is a second query so if you see then the second query comes and then it, it's try to find out what is do we do I have a past equivalent of this query that means if the query q1 and q2 are same then they should have a same past representation and same execution plan but unfortunately everything is same everything is almost same up to this point but the last character in one case is one in another case is two therefore these two queries are not literally equivalent this thing so that means in this case oracle is again going to parse this one even though almost everything is same but it will have a different value and it will store here that means we need to parse again so similarly like you know in, in again somebody is going to give employee number is equal to say 5 so everything else is same just just only that he is going to query the employee number to 5 so again another parsing so these are called hard parsing okay hard parsing because it does all this execution plan and all this thing so what I can do I can write this all this query in a different way I'm going to do I'm going to write select star from EMP where EMP number is equal to X so this the, the, the user one is going to give write this query and if it's write this query 
then the first time so let's now remove all these things because you know we assume that we rewrite this query and we start the database so therefore nothing is there right now okay and then for the first time when I write this query this Q1 select start from MP where employee number is equal to X colon X then we create a parse tree and execution plan in second user is going to do and then, then whenever you're going to do Q1 then it will in our, in our run time it will ask what is the value of X then he gives value of X is equal to 1 because he wants to do 1 then second user he is also going to row exactly same query select star from EMP where employee number is equal to colon X so I don't I don't write so exactly the same thing user number 2 is going to do but user number 2 whenever is asks for you the values of employee number he will give 2 by doing this this thing what we are saying that this query now they are sending q1 and q2 they are exactly same therefore they can use once they parse and keep the parsing you know execution plan and parse tree q1 q2 q3 and all those things they can reuse that one okay and during the runtime they will you know bind to the actual value of this thing so this is how you know this is how you are going to use bind variable so that your application would scalable otherwise like if you write an application like this without using bind variable then you are going to be in problem saying that you will do lot of hard parsing okay so that is that can be avoided by using a bind variable